Two of the four inexperienced drivers we've met have had accidents in bad weather. Road was always seeing us coming round and round about, and I went round it a bit too fast, and I went um, sliding towards the kerb. Both my wheels hit the kerb, and my car went on its side. I was racing a car up a dual carriageway, round a roundabout. It was uh, pouring down with rain, and uh, I didn't have much tread on my tyres at all, and uh, just lost it on a roundabout, completely ripped off my car. So now we're going to put their driving skills to the test in difficult weather conditions. They're going to have to brake and suddenly avoid a car in front of them. And as the weather hasn't forecast rain or ice, we're going to simulate it. And that's where this comes in. The skid car can simulate a road that's wet or a road surface that's covered with black ice. It's done via a computer, controlled by instructor Adrian Jones, who will alter the car's handling. So here's what they have to do. They're going to be driving along here at 30 miles an hour. At the end of the line of cones is an inflatable car. As they approach it, the traffic lights will change to red. Then they have to react. The big question is, can they stop and avoid the inflatable car in time? I've got the buttons for the traffic lights. Let's see how our young drivers get on. First up is Joe. How will he cope in everyday wet weather? He says he's easily distracted behind the wheel. Now he'll be under pressure because of the weather conditions we're about to give him. Action, get it. Stop. Stop. He was close, but he just about managed to miss the inflatable car. Did you miss it? I don't know. I think you might have just clipped it. Hello, mate. Yeah. How was it? A bit nerve-wracking. Really? Yeah. See the red lights come on? Yeah, I saw the red lights. I was a bit too close to uh, react. You look a bit, um, a bit shaky. Heart's pounding. Really? To be Do you always drive for the conditions? No. To be honest? No, no, I don't. Eddie, did you respond in time? Uh, no, he was a bit uh, late there. I think he did clip the back end of that car, and, of course, if he had clipped it, he could have possibly rolled the car, hit something else that was coming along. I'm a bit scared, to be honest, about that. Next up is Rachel, and for her test, we'll be simulating icy conditions. I'll tell you to brake, and I want you to not uh, hit that car, all right? OK, brake, brake. Oh! 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 No control whatsoever. Has smashed the inflatable car. Right. <laughs> Did I break too late? No. You broke right. You had a black ice. Huh? You're on black ice. That's what your car would do. Yeah. Um, did you think about trying to avoid the inflatable car? I would try and avoid it, what, like spin or just get out of the way there, I suppose. Yeah. But I didn't know what was gonna happen, so. Isn't that <laughs> what happens on the road though? You don't know what's gonna happen. I suppose, yeah. Don't seem that bothered. Should I be? You tell me. Well, if it was a real car, oh. I'd be quite worried. Could have been a real car. Yeah, but I wouldn't drive so close to it and then break if it was a real car. Back at the test site, and it's Tom, who loves speed, whatever the weather. OK, so we're simulating being on ice, and I tell you to brake. You see that in red lights, just brake and steer the car to the right. Tom, he had a big smash at a roundabout in very wet conditions. Let's see how he gets on with the ice. Oh, that was close. He kind of clipped the inflatable car, I think, but he's ruined a couple of cones. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> that was mad. I just had no steering at all. Just had to, had to hope. You're living on hope rather than ability. Yeah, I just had no steering at all. I couldn't, do, I couldn't do anything. So you missed the inflatable car, but you took out a couple of cones after. <laughs> yeah. So. I was only going 25, 30 miles an hour. Yeah. Not very fast then. No, if I'm going. And, be... and you say earlier you do at least 50 and 30 mile an hour zones. And... Yeah, I'm going to cause some damage if I do that. No. Yeah. Last up is Martin. So when you say brake, I've got a brake. Yeah, brake and don't hit the red car. Oh, 
Oh my... So that that would have been a fatality. That would have been uh, that would, you would have killed somebody there. Yeah. What is going on there? I don't there know. There's absolutely no reaction on your part. I braked. It won't break. I tried steering. It won't steer. Then it steered, and then it was too late. I don't understand Take how you didn't it, uh, stop at all. Yeah. What happened, Eddie? A bit of black ice on the road there. Lost control of the car. Couldn't brake it up. Didn't do any pumping, braking, or anything like that. And that would have ended up as a fatality for whoever was in that front seat car and possibly ourselves. Yeah. Come out with a right mess, then. OK, we gave them extreme weather conditions, but I think that test proved that none of our young drivers are as good as they made out to be. That could have been a real road which would have ended in disaster. The four drivers I met earlier may not appreciate that the kind of careless driving they do can end up in tragedy. What I'm about to tell them now will hopefully bring it home. I'm showing them two crushed cars, similar to those found at the crash scene where Alice Greenwood, Liam Connell and Andrew Sellers died. And to show them the type of driving that caused this accident, they're going to witness five cars close together, overtaking, speeding, and taking risks, which they all admit doing. I take a lot of risks. Just like overtaking people when there's like the tiniest bit of room, going up really close behind people and then cutting into another lane. Oh, anywhere. If you get a chance to street race on a public road, I'll do it. Get as close as to, uh, to the rear end as I can then come parallel with them, see if they want to race me. If they want to race me, they will. They'll put their foot down, I'll put my foot down. I'll see what they can do. Police have stopped me and they've arrested me for racing. And they asked me who I'm racing with, where am I going, how many is in the convoy racing. Guys, we've been talking a lot today about your driving and your behaviour behind the wheel. What I want to do now is tell you a story about a group of people who were driving just as recklessly as you say you were. Five lads in a convoy. The speed limit was 50 miles an hour, but the police said they could have been doing 70 miles an hour. The third person in the convoy was a guy called Andrew, who's 18 years of age. His passenger was Liam, he was 16. Coming the other way was Juliet Greenwood. She had her two daughters in the car, Alice, who was 12, and Clara was just six. Andrew lost control of his car, going too fast, coming around a sweeping bend. He spun and he plowed straight into the Greenwoods' car. Killing Liam and Andrew straight away, Juliet's daughter, Alice, who was 12, was killed. By the way, the four other drivers were convicted by the police because they could prove that they were involved in causing the accident in the first place. How does it make you feel? It brings it to reality of what potentially can happen. I want to introduce you to two people. Juliet Greenwood, the mother of Alice and Clara, and Shay, who's the father of Liam. Come in here. Shay, um, tell the guys about your journey to the crash scene that night. I just got a call that Liam had been in an accident, and when I pulled up, there was just carnage, similar to this. I was pretty badly hurt, and I could get to Clara and I could touch her, but I couldn't get to Alice. I could see that Alice was critically ill, and that's one of the hardest things, to know that she was dying there in the back seat of the car, and I couldn't get to her. There was an ambulance there and they were putting Mrs Greenwood's daughter into the back of the ambulance, which I thought was my son. But it wasn't my son, so I had to hang about for three and a half hours and identify his body at the side of the road. He was my only son. And I can't replace him. What are you making of this, guys? You, know, you don't really think of um, what can happen at the time. I mean, obviously, when you see the after effect, or well, at least it just shows um, what could happen. 
you can look at a crash and you can say, oh, that's a bad crash, like, people must have got hurt, but then hearing how it affects people's lives is what's the worst out of everything. I think this will be what makes me sort of slow down. Can't really say much else. Well, today's really opened my eyes. From when I speed to when I don't wear a seatbelt and show off in front of my mates. From what I've seen today, it's not what I'm meant to do that anymore. I just think it's a, it's a big wake-up call, you know? Is it really worth it? And you also said about being young, you know, you get one life being young. Do you care about your life? Do you care about yeah, of course I the do. future? Of course I do. I want a future, of course I do. I'm going to stop acting the big man, do you know what I mean? Nothing will bring Alice or Liam back. Nothing. There is nothing worse that can happen to us, but you've got a chance. We all think we've got a future, but, you know, don't take it for granted. Meeting Juliet and Shay had a big impact on me. And I think the same can be said for Rachel, Joe, Martin and Tom. They're now aware that all of this is very real. It could have been their friends or family on that rural road in Derby. I'm really surprised, but it's completely changed their attitudes. And I think tonight they're going to drive home with safety in mind, rather than that constant urge for a thrill.